Welcome to the No Crime No Time community and this is one of our blogs. Um, so here we go guys. I'm going to jump over. It says that I'm not receiving enough video to maintain or smooth streaming or something. It flash. It's flashing. So one of the things that's going to be really good about us getting on our own channel is we're going with a completely different format for video and we won't have buffering we won't have advertisement we won't have to worry about censorship and we won't have to worry that we're non-compliant with the copa child protective law so those are the reasons that we are starting the no crime no time community you don't get a lot of benefits as a member um, you get um, as a member paid member you'll get notifications when videos come out there'll be a handful of videos that are for members only most of it is for the general public. Um, you're basically just signing up to support the freedom of what we just talked about, which is freedom of speech. Hey, Dark Side of the Moon, good to see you. And Wigaholic, Justin. Um, free Julian Assange. Okay, guys, I'm going to head over. We're going to get started with that. We'll come back and do meet and greet on the second half. Good to see you all. So this is the Avery Bimbenic picture this, and I've titled it Photographic Memory Framed and Locked Up. And I think it fits both Bimbenic and Avery. And when we look at this case, both cases, photographs are prevalent throughout both cases. And I don't know what that means, but I want to research it with you. So let's talk about, I found 20 things, I found more than that, but I found 20 specific things that I thought needed attention that pertain to photographs. I mean, you look at the news today, we have pornography running rampant, um, there's sex trafficking, there's child pornography, and that's coming into the light. But what was hidden in the dark back then and why is everything to do with photographs? So let's start off. I've just grabbed some file folders, thrown them up here, um, and we're going to slide them down to reveal each one. We have 20. So the first one is um, the 1985 photo lineup for Stephen Avery. So I find it interesting that he was the only suspect that was put in both lineups. And that in itself shows a biased way of course the victim is only seeing that one suspect twice all the others aren't going to look as familiar so it's it's implying it's like a subliminal implant for the victim to see the same person in the lineup twice i think it also sends an implied message that's not spoken that the police feel this should be a person of serious interest Okay, let's go ahead and talk about number two. Tom Pierce and Teresa took photos of children and focused on family photography as well as were involved in nude photography. Tom Pierce took pictures for Green Bay Packers and other famous people. And Teresa's business was listed as adult entertainment. I really find the line getting thin between the day and the night. Um, it's concerning to me that this is all taking place without a second look. Um, was it possible that we're looking at somebody that's working as an agent that's, that's trying to uncover a child porn ring? or a porn ring or whatever um, in the case. I don't know. Let's go ahead and look at number three. I kind of went down too far. This is going to be a sensitive one for a lot of folks, but victimology is highly important. Where are the photos of Teresa's life? She has the short haircut. She looks very familiar and the same type of photo on her face in almost every picture. It, it doesn't appear she ages. It doesn't appear she changes her hairstyle. Um, it, it, we don't see anything of the family 
pictures of her at the park with her family or camping or any of this. Um, no childhood photographs that I can think of except for one, which was on the cover of what they showed to the news media. And people have, you know, slipped a picture off their screenshot. But where is, uh, where's the annual from the school she went to that shows all her pictures for every grade? Because it's not in their library. So let's go down to um, four. Bradley and KC Sheck. So Teresa Halbach photographed Bradley and KC Sheck, who were married, in the nude. And then there's a court hearing over the photographs or a court legality over the photographs, court date. And Casey and Bradley go, and Teresa goes with Bradley to this court hearing over these photographs. Later, Casey files a restraining order on Bradley. Five days later, Casey Shack files for divorce. Now, somewhere in this time frame, Casey has a baby. I don't know when it was, can't tell you. Uh, meanwhile, Bradley... Sheck is maintaining a relationship with Teresa all the way up till she goes missing and is not investigated properly as a suspect. Then later we find out that there's photographs of Bradley and Casey in a trunk beside Teresa's bed and are found by the officers with other photos. What is going on there? Let's go ahead and um, we'll do number five. Let me move this file out of our way. We'll just store it over here. So five, I kind of went over five, which was the trunk of photos with the negatives. Six, a big one, Auto Trader. It's all about photos, getting on property, cold calls you can justify why you're on someone's taking picture of someone's property without their permission oh I saw you had a vehicle for sale and and I just wanted to snap a shot in case you wanted to list it with auto trader and at the same time we have Kathy Williford DOJ who is handling the same route that Steve Avery's on and it's handed over to Teresa with her little um haircut there it makes you wonder what is truly going on with the with the idea that DOJ is vis is visiting Stephen Avery's property prior to Teresa going missing. Number seven, Michael Hawbach, the victim's brother, is head of video editing control of video for the Green Bay Packers. Tom Pierce photographed the Green Bay Packers. Teresa worked with Tom Pierce as an understudy for years. Number eight. Dave Pagoda spoke of the club pictures. He was presented with pictures that were of nude males. He recognized one as a teacher or a coach or something along that lines having to do with school. Prominent businessmen are in these pictures engaged in sexual activity and he's more or less pressured to become part of this club and go to these meetings. He doesn't comply. He brushes it off and then his manager dies of a quote unquote alleged heart attack but is reported to have blood all over her. Again, it's the photos. Let's go to nine. Christine Schultz spoke of photos and had a photo album. She was showing Polka, her friend Polka, Miss Polka. And she wouldn't reveal the last few pictures because, according to Polka, she felt that Christine was embarrassed by those photos. Right before the murder. How about the Track Tavern nude picnic photos where we have allegedly law enforcement engaging in illegal 
drug activity in front of minors. I don't even have words for that. Um, let's show this one over here for now. All right, are you ready? <laughs> here we go. Number 11. Law enforcement was searching all Avery property for porn magazines, computers, movies, and cable. They were calling even the cable companies to see what Steve Avery was watching. They were obsessed with the search on porn. They were looking for porn more than they were looking for evidence of the actual crime. All right, here's number 12. Bobby Dassey's computer was filled with depraved images of death and child porn and worse. So we have a DOJ agent, Kathy Williford, who has the route before Teresa. We have the FBI testing all kinds of things in the Steve Avery Halbach case from the blood itself to the fingerprints scanned, laser scanned on the RAV. Um, everything, everything in the case gets tested by the FBI. Scott Blodorn was talking about wanting to apply for the FBI or having applied for the FBI. Was Teresa Habach an ABC group? Does she is she supposed to be filling in Kathy Williford's position? Is it possible that the searches that were on Bobby Dassey's computer triggered the red flag for FBI to begin to surveil a, to survey that compound? the Dassey Avery area. It makes you wonder if bad law enforcement that had a conflict of interest took advantage of something like that to land it in Stephen Avery's lap and frame him. Did they facilitate something along the lines of the DOJ agent going missing. Let's continue. 13. This is one I don't particularly care to discuss, but because I just brought up a theory and that's all it is, I ask a question. Um, you know, use your own judgment here. Think through your own facts and knowledge. Earl Avery hit a camera in a laundry basket during a birthday party where even two-year-olds were filmed. And he was turned in and got caught for that. Is it possible that that added on to the searches being performed on the Dassey computer? Made it even more of a hot target with Stephen coming home in that area. It served two purposes. Let's continue on. 14. Scott Blodorn gives Pam of God Sturm a camera. Only searcher to get the camera. Only one. Why would you save the camera to the last searcher that you're not even sure is coming and supposedly don't know is coming? Why wouldn't you hand your camera over to the first person that you felt was going to the right direction? And Pam Sturm is late to this meeting. All the other searchers have already begun to do their job. We have light nighttime photos where there's a completely, it's almost like a dusk setting. We have nighttime pictures with rain. We have daytime pictures. Is it possible that this camera that Pam Sturm is given already contains photographs of the RAV4 from an earlier time frame? Is it possible that it's actually Pam Sturm's camera. She's a PI. Of course she would have a camera. Some questions to think on. So we're going to move this folder somewhere. Where do we put this one? How about there? All right, number 15. Colborne 
was the evidence photographer and is running for sheriff. He wants to make it look like he is the hero. He's everywhere the evidence is. What a better position than being the one to snap the shots. Remember the AudioVox phone? The guy that's supposed to be taking pictures for the state is told by Colborn to put the camera away. He's got it. Colburn's running up to Maribel Caves and photographing a box of lube. I don't know what a box means, but lube, and it said a box. A female pant leg over in Maribel Caves or Mar Maribel Park, same place, which is right near Hotel Hell and Devil's Park and right near Avery's. Okay. We all know this one, an easy one. 16, bones allegedly found in Avery's pit, never photographed. Well, we know why. People ask that all the time. Why weren't they photographed? We have the answer from John Ertl, the state tech that um, he's the investigator for the state crime lab, the field tech. And he said, we do not photograph altered crime scenes. There's your answer. Steve Avery's pit was altered. There's no, there's no way around it. The state testified as such. So we're going to jump down to another big one. So Ronald Grophy took the in situ pictures, which means the first photographs of a crime area. Okay the very first ones, before anybody starts processing the scene, the in-situ photos. Um, and yet, when he opened the door to take the pictures, he opened the driver's door, he didn't have to unlock it. So between the time that Pam Sturm tells us in her call to Weger, well, it should have been Pagel, Pogel, but it wasn't. It turned out Weger got on the phone. Um, in between that time when it's reported locked, all the doors are locked, and she claims at the time in pretrial, it's a two-door. And um, all the doors are locked. In between there and the crime lab, when the first photos before the vehicle's process, Ronald Grophy opens the driver's door without a problem, no key, and took photographs. 18. So we have some new photographs that uh, just come out. There's like 600, I believe. And the VIN number plate is finally photographed. And of course, it's completely blurry and you can't read it. Why? Are you guys laughing about that? The ones that put the photos out for us? Thinking that's cute? That answers all questions because you know every single time it's something with that vehicle and the identification we have an altercation a problem same with the victim all it does is make you guys look super suspicious okay so you can give it up we will figure this out I find this one overlooked often but it's vital that people understand this so when Stephen Avery went to Peg Lautenschlager, who was our attorney general, and was expressing that he felt that he had been framed, not just wrongly accused, but framed and put in this position um, where they knew he wasn't the one to commit the crime and none of the county responded to relieve his incarceration. And Peg Lautenschlager came right out and she confirmed that in her opinion that the county and anyone involved had done no wrong. Correct? So then when Stephen is the suspect and then arrested and charged with the crime of allegedly murdering Teresa Haubach a few months before Br Brendan Dassey is going to give his coerced confession, before he produces that. Peg Lautenschlager 
enacts the law that all juveniles who are interrogated or questioned will be videotaped. Was this to protect the juveniles? Because we're missing minutes in those tapes. And we don't have the first interviews where later we, we hear them apologizing to Brendan for their past behavior in the previous interrogations and using the words rough and in your face. But we never see those videos. So isn't it that the videos are a double standard? They're only produced when it's in the benefit of the state, but they're not used during the time frame when the manipulation and coercion is put into place. I mean, Reed's technique is a torture technique and you're dealing with a mentally challenged child and it's, um, it's not professional and it shouldn't be condoned nor tolerated. And I believe to this day that they should be charged with the crime of intimidating and bullying a child into, um, well, attempted, they're attempting to take his life away, right? You guys figure that out. I don't know what you would call it, but there's got to be some law to protect these kids. And number 20, and this is the big one that Zellner and I both want to know and everybody else. Where in the hell is a flyover video? This is absolutely ridiculous. We've got, what, three minutes out of four days? It, where is the rest of the flyover video? It would tell us everything, and that's why you're not going to give it up. That's why you're not going to give us the RAV4. Um, basically, I'm wanting to know, you guys, is it possible that all this pornography talk and child sex trafficking and, and, and the DOJ going over there and running the route to Avery's, it looks like they're under surveillance, does it not? And is it possible that all this bad porn and, um, child pornography that's going across the DASI screen is triggering the FBI? Is it possible that Manitowoc law enforcement may have seen an opportunity that would forever sink Avery's boat. So I'm going to come back up to topside and we're going to talk theory. So that's the second half. I thank you for enjoying me on the first half. And if you have time, please join us for topside. All right, you guys. So we're going to ho, ho, ho. Okay, we're going to try. I'm going to try to do this pretty quick. Um, I just want to welcome everyone and uh, throw out a few names out there. Super Mario Maker 2 Glitch Hunters. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's an early live because I'm not in bed yet. Awesome. Dark Side says Free Julian. Yes. Uh, Wigaholic Sharing is Caring. Hey, Super Mario. Edna, Edna Arthur is here. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. It's been so long. Good to see you, love. I get excited to see those names that I remember from the beginning. Marianne Schumer, uh, Schumann is here. Hi, everyone, she says. Dark Side, of course, is with us. Thal Thal is here. Hi, Thal Thal. Good to see you. I miss you guys. Free Julian Estange says, hashtag imperialism on trial today to GRT, the story on Julian Assange. If he goes down, we lose RD and all independence journalists can be locked up. We need to dig into that, you guys. Um, let's pay some attention. Give her a click. And uh, if I do see, if you want to list a website, I can actually approve that, I believe, Julian. So go ahead and share away and we'll do that. Crystal Terry is here. Hi, good to see you. Um, I think somebody said Thread Killer is here too. I didn't see him post. Not sure where they are, but I think they're here with us. And uh, all right, you guys, let's see. Tom Pierce also offered nude photography, didn't he? Yes, he sure did. Um, you know, he freely admitted that Teresa was using his own studio for both nude photography and child photography. I'm not trying to build a monster here. I'm doing victimology and I appreciate that I'm not trying to defame a victim in any way or to flower them. Um, I'm simply trying to dig into what was physically taking place and what was occurring. So she's having an affair with married men. 
or man, I should say. Um, she's doing nude photography. She's doing child photography, family photography. She's working weddings. Um, she's drinking. We see that in photos. And we hear about her getting lined up for other porn shots. Um, we have that one email from that one guy that's named Ken that's telling her that she takes better care of him than his mother. Um, it, it just makes you wonder, is it possible that she was either in a sting operation as a, acting as an official capacity. We'll just leave it at that. And that would involve her with the Tom Pierce thing. It may involve, it could involve her, I should say, not would, but could. Um, it may involve her where she is um, doing these hustle shots, if you will, to try to get into it. It would explain the haircut she would have died within service doing her duty, so I could understand where chins would be held high, even from a family standpoint. Um, it really brings a lot of questions forward. And yeah, it's all speculation, of course, but uh, it really does make us have to ask some questions when we we're looking at what King Kratz built up was this nun that was ready to go into, you know, the monastery. And that's not what we were seeing. That's not what we're seeing at all. This individual had a rich life, and um, if this isn't a, if this isn't an agent, how would the family have felt about all this? Um, let me just say chaotic behavior. How would you know if you're trying to get into the Green Bay Packers and be the videographer and head up the lawyer's office there at Twigs and all this? And you're the hall box and you have the dairy farm and your reputation's on the line at all times. How are they feeling about this promiscuous um, daughter? Is that, you know, that's something to think about. So, naked picnics Julian's talking about. Yeah, um, so that's the Bembenic case she turned in some photos from Trax Tavern where allegedly there were police officers fellow officers that were engaged in criminal drug activity naked and in front of children in daylight and in some sort of a park and allegedly there's hundreds of these photos and then there are many 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 different parties and even videotapes of this um, and that was something Ira Robbins spoke of and that was the investigator, private investigator for Ben Benick. So love one another says, are any of these people in the Tracks Tavern photo firemen? That's a good question. I'm not sure. That's something we should probably be looking at. Okay, um, let's see here. Love one another says, and, and I love your name. Um, the cop who interviewed Stephen in the car in Krivitz says to him that the firemen used to have picnics back in 82 at the dam. Whoa, I just got goosebumps. We need to find out who the guy is and try to locate something to rewatch that. I don't doubt you at all. I just want to see it too. Uh, Free Julian Assange says, I've often wondered if that was Kratz hard drive said to be Dazzy computer searches. You know, I thought that too. I mean, would you recognize if there was 10 hard drives on the table? Would you even recognize your own? How do we know with all the swapping and the swipping of swapping of swabs? How do we actually have any proof? Proof to me, I guess is the way to put it, that on the evidence table, we weren't looking at someone else's hard drive that had this timing of these depraved searches. Hi, Dee. How are you? Yeah, Pam of God Sturm. Yeah, she told everybody that she was able to find this vehicle in 15 minutes. Out of 4,000 cars and 39 acres, she was able to find the vehicle in 15 minutes. Now, I could see one thing I noted was when we were doing the CASA reports. Oh, you guys hear the truth train? It's not letting up today, is it? Um, here we go, guys. Truth train for you. 
So when we were doing the CASO reports, I found it interesting once the RAV had been located and other officers needed to be able to go find where the RAV was on foot, they were told to stay in the left foot lane and it would take, it, take them right to it. Isn't that interesting that if you stay in the right foot lane, it takes you right to the RAV and in a very short distance on time? Um, that very well could have been told to Pam by someone that knew this information. Whoever planted that vehicle on that property would have only had to get, you know, past one person on the weekend of the 5th because everybody else was going up to Crivets. So they would have had to get by um, Earl Avery, who doesn't live on the property and would have been gone at night. Okay, so it wouldn't have been hard to say if, you know, we're going to have you act as a uh, non-legal person to find this vehicle so we can get our warrants and get on there. All you're going to do, Pam of God Sturm, is to stay in the left foot lane. It'll take you right to the RAV. How hard would that be? Brambler Teaser said, hey, I got the notification. Excellent. Good to see you. I told you I'm trying to fix things for you guys. Some of it's on you guys' end. Um, we are going to be leaving YouTube. We are going to be going to our no crime, no time community. This, as you can see in this little corner over here, is... Um, oh, I've been leaning forward. I forget I'm on video, you guys. Um it shows you this is guest pass and that's how a lot of our videos will be is just guest pass and so anybody can do that most of our information anything to do with the cases that's going to help the case is of course left as public access and those that have become members they get notifications that uh, we're doing videos um, they can actually add on to the file system sharing the sharing and they can label like Julian Assange file and they can put information in there and host that as a member whereas the public will be able to read it all and see it all they just can't name folders and upload so members have that benefit um, basically members are just supporting the whole community um, we're covering the fact that we don't want censorship any longer um, we don't want advertisement any longer. We want to comply with the COPA law that says that we protect children. Um, we don't sell their information. We don't allow advertisers to have their information. Um, and what else do we get out of it? We get out of our own boss, literally. We can talk about the things we need to, whether they're political or not. We can remain journalists. Um, and that's really important. And in order to do that, we have to disconnect from Big Brother's government, Google-type platforms because we are getting censored. I want to demonetize this channel so bad because then they can't censor me as much. But yet, YouTube says if you demonetize your channel, they'll delete your channel. So we have no choice, but we're building a wonderful community and we will have the ability. Also, members will get, yeah, I told you, we'll get ding that we're doing something, you know, a live or what have you, a discussion. So. I'm just reading some of this to see. Um, Wigaholic sharing is caring. Why are there no photos of the tampered video immediately for verification? Okay, are you talking of Brendan's tampered video? Which tampered video are you referring to, Wigaholic? We'll come back to that. I need a little bit more to understand. I may have missed something. Ronald Cass, good to see you. He says the burn pit was more than altered. It was excavated almost immediately to prevent any future verification. Yeah, evidence is erased immediately, isn't it? Time to test the bullet and see if we have victim DNA. Oh, we do. Oops, bullet gone. But yeah, the defense gets the photographs and are able to actually analyze the, the you know, 
remaining composite on the, the bullet itself, it's not bone, it's not blood. But the DNA is, oops, gone, can't be tested anymore. So we don't, we don't know what it is, but it's not blood, blood or bone of Halbach. So the bullet didn't kill her. So it's not the murder weapon. So we don't even have a murder weapon in the Avery case, to be honest. We really do not. Jasta Babe says, finally made it to a live show. Good to see you. Free Julian says, and it might be to make it appear larger and deeper. I'm thinking, Ronald, she's talking about the burn pit. When they excavate it, it makes it look like, you know, it's just this monster pit. Uh, Wigaholic says, don't forget to leave your DNA, y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bramble Teaser, I can't work out why the vehicle wasn't made available for the defense team or the witnesses. Well, it was made available to the defense the first time around, and Budin did see the vehicle. He doesn't recall if there was a dent in it or if there was any damage to the vehicle that he has um, stated. But he did see it, and they had the ability to check it out then, and then poof, it's gone. Dark Side says, yeah, thread kill. Well, I lost where she was. Let me get back up there. It just jumped a mile. She said that the guy, I, I remember what she said. It was something to the effect of the guy that was driving the little um, excavator actually had a smile on his face. Free Julian says we need some heavy coders to build a free access network IP server deep web. That would be incredible. If anybody can do that and is willing to donate their services for all of us YouTubers to be able to go um, protect ourselves like that, that would be, that would keep us going for a long time for freedom of speech. I'm just saying. Bramble Teaser says, I'm surprised Kratz wasn't operating the excavator and eating Subway, you know. Run with Scissors says, so where will this be located? How do we join? I am sure you're said it, but I'm technology inept. Oh, no, that's no problem. It's actually at um, www.nocrimenotime.org. So I will, um, you can look in the description below this video. It's there and it's also right here. <laughs> I think I'm lagging pretty bad, but um, you can you can see it in the little corner there. All right, guys, is there anything else that anybody would like to talk about today? Edna says, love you, rubber ducky, and love Stephen and Brendan and want them home like yesterday. They never should have been in prison in the first place. Much love to all and to all supporters. You know, you got to love people that um, just no matter what, stay focused on this case and work and work every day at trying to bring awareness. Um, you know, these photographs are like a photographic memory preserved through our research of this case. These documents online will fade someday. We have to archive them and save them for our youth, the history, so that history isn't allowed to repeat itself. So that as our youth grow up, we have preserved for them the knowledge of what happened to Bam Benick, of what happened to Avery, of what happened to Carmen Botwell, Teresa Halbach, um, Ricky Hotchstetler, and Chris Skinner. Um, all these people, Christine Rudy, all these people have suffered so much. And if we just let it all fall by the wayside, our children will relive it again. So let's keep on working. Let's get these guys home, you guys. Let's keep going. Thank you all and much love.